Psalms chapter 34. A Psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech who drove him away and he departed. That will be found in 1 Samuel 21 verses 10 through 13. And uh, the key phrase in this psalm is the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. David's in a cave, hiding from King Saul, running from Saul at this at this song. He ran to, I believe it's, uh, he ran to, for help. There was going to be no help. Instead of getting in trouble, David, you know, let his spittle fall to the ground, scratching at the door like a wet, mad man. David is, is at a point in his life right now, everything has fallen. He has no more home. He has no friends. He doesn't even have his army yet. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Even in trouble. Even when all the worlds crashed around them. The king is out for his soul. To kill him. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Anything particular about that verse? My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Who's speaking? David is. David's a man. And if you run that her with Romans 7, 3, and 4, your soul is spoken of as feminine. We are the bride of Christ. Israel is spoken of as a woman. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So what David's doing in his time of trouble, serving the Lord and doing right, others are going to be encouraged. And David's going to get an entire army built up of all the rejects. And David continues to do right. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Who would want to join David now? This guy's scribbling at the door, making himself look like a, 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 a lunatic. He's got the king after him. Yeah, right. I'm going to go follow David. But those that love the Lord and know to do right will follow David because they know that David's doing right and Saul is not. Jonathan knew that. But all oh, to sleep in his bed in the castle. All oh, to be the king's son. I mean, I'm not going to lay out there in the caves in the fields with David and his men. I'm going to go back home in royalty. And he died with his father and his brothers. In sin. Now, did he go to heaven or hell? I don't know. I can't answer that. See, with these titles of the Psalms, you can now put the Psalm in the picture of where it is written. Scripture with Scripture. Do you just see, the, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yeah, David, I see what your life is right now. You know why Christians won't go out and witness? Because they know what happens to those that do do it. People slam the doors in their face. People cuss them out. They have no friends. They don't get the promotions. Yeah, I'm going to follow you with, yeah, right. And let us exalt his name together. Now notice David said, let's get together to magnify the Lord. Let us exalt his name. Now he doesn't get together to go play football. He doesn't get together to have a fellowship dinner. He doesn't get together in a rock concert. He doesn't get together in foolishness. He gets together with exalting and magnifying God. And I have been told my own self, if people know I'm a weirdo, you know, in the church by a pastor, all you want to do is talk to the Lord. Learn a bit, learn something about the ball game so you can talk to other people. The hell with the ball games. I want to talk about Christ. Well, don't you know that this guy is saved and he still does his game on Sunday? When he's supposed to be in church? 
There's one guy out there for Jesus. He's a great, great in his team, and, and I'm not going to mention his name or anything like that. And, and I'm going to do tattoos for Jesus. And you don't know what the Bible says? And you won't listen to your mother because your mother says you're a fool. So you're disobeying the gospel and you're disobeying your mother who's telling you to do right. Hey, right, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to put you put your picture up on the wall. Yeah, sure. But how many Christians do? I sought the Lord and he heard me. God heard you. Now I'm going to say this over and over and over till the Lord kills me or takes me home by the rapture. There are three answers to prayer. The first one is the one you want. Yeah, okay, here you go. Thank you. Two, no. That's the one we don't want. Three, now this is the heartbreaker one, not now. You know, Paul prayed three times for that thorn in his flesh. And God said, no. Moses prayed to God, and we don't know how many times. Lord, let me go in the land. No, but I'll let you see it. Wait a minute. No, God didn't tell him no. When did Moses go into the land? The day that he met Peter, James, and John on the mountain with Jesus and Elijah. So when God told Moses, you're not going to land, that wasn't a no. That was a wait. Moses died. Moses died, and much later after that did the prayer get answered. You know what? Some of your prayers being answered may be after the rapture. You know what? If your prayers are for, for your tears to stop, I can tell you exactly when that's going to happen. Revelation 21. Everything upsets me. Everything, my, my, whatever it is, it's going to end in Revelation 21. And that's when God will wipe your tears. The pain and suffering will definitely end at the death or rapture. Maybe God will give you mercy. And deliver me from all my fears. I wish I could say that. But he has. I had this great fear of heights. But I've done some things with ladders and stuff like that that needed to be done. And he gave me the glory to do it. Now put a put an aluminum ladder out there right now. I'll tell you right now, I don't think he'll get the glory for that one. May, may not. They looked unto him, God, and were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. So Romans chapter 10, verses 11 and 12 says, If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you shall not be ashamed. Now, you got to look at that verse and say, Well, wait a minute. I know Christians that are ashamed. Then that verse is not today. The shame there is once all the judgments are done and you're standing in New Jerusalem and everybody else is standing in the lake of fire. Then you won't be ashamed for your decision for Christ at that time of your life. All those that go into the lake of fire will be ashamed. This poor man cried. I don't know who he's talking about. And we're, uh, wait a minute. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Now maybe he's talking about himself. At this point, David is poor. I mean, he was just a shepherd. He's kicked out of, the, out of the kingdom. He's not with the royalty no more. Have you ever lost everything in your life for the Lord? I have. A few times in my life has the Lord started my life completely over. You say, show me scripture for that, David. David sat at the table of the king. It is recorded at one point that King Saul sitting at the table having dinner. He looks over. He says, where's David? This is two nights he hasn't been here. David sat with the king and ate the king's food. Now he's out in the fields. Now he's got to hunt for food again. He don't even have sheep. At least when he was with his father, he had the sheep. He's down to nothing. Just what's on his back and he... Got the, he didn't have his own sword. He had to get Goliath's sword. 
It is a biblical account which people are afraid of again, of God restarting your whole life over. That's what's called being born again. And the angel of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, pre-incarnate, encamped round about them that fear him and deliver them. All right, the angel of the Lord can't round about. The angel of the Lord, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, is omnipresent. He wasn't in this tent and not in that tent. He wasn't over in the chow line while they were over here, you know, in the medic line. The angel of the Lord is in every place of this camp. That's called omnipresent. You know who steals that character that we just celebrated? Santa Claus. Santa Claus can be all over the world at one time. I know. Get off Christmas. It's over with. Now watch this one. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. John was told and Elijah, uh, not Elijah, Ezekiel was told to eat a book. Adam was told not to eat. Jesus sat down and ate. You want an interesting Bible study that, that you could do forever? And, and Look at all the reference that has to do with eating in the Bible. From God telling Adam and Eve, well, excuse me, you get it right. When God told Adam not to eat that fruit. All the way to Revelation 22 when God says, I'll let you have the fruit of the tree of life freely. From Revelation, uh, excuse me, from Genesis 2 to Revelation 22, you will find food and eating. No interesting thing. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him, God. You put your trust in the Lord, he'll take care of you. But, that's not the prosperity gospel. Paul did not have riches, but Paul, Paul trusted in the Lord. Paul had his food. Paul had clothes. Paul had a, had a witness that the person couldn't get away from him. Imagine being chained to Paul and being a heathen or an atheist. I bet you. Uh, I bet you when, when the soldier went up and looked on his calendar, oh, you got Paul. Hey, I'll tell. I'll trade you three chariots for <laughs> you. Take Paul. Get on this little can or however. They do. Uh, I'm sick today. And you know what? I don't think Paul was rude and crude. I think if Paul was chained to an atheist. I bet you just sit there and just talk. Oh, fear the Lord. Ye his saints. Go to the graveyard and find how many saints there of a church that are fearing the Lord today. Imagine digging up a body and saying, Fear the Lord! You see? No. It should, the Bible tells you a saint is a live person. So if you're a saint of God, you are to fear the Lord. For there is no want to them that fear him. But I have wants. Yeah, but are they the wants that God wants you to have? See, the Bible word for that is called content. Study that one. Study the phrase, which I, I don't think is too often in the Bible, but something like, he was content. Or just look up the word content in the Bible. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. Uh-oh. You better call Peter on God. There's lions that are out there. They're not getting fed. But they seek the Lord. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Now, if you read that verse where you want to read it, you can read it to pervert it. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. They, they don't get no good thing. That's not what it's saying. That's saying God will provide the good things that are for you. God will not give you anything evil. 
But the problem is, God will give you something if you want it enough, even if it destroys your life. I just read in Ezekiel today that God said, listen, if you want that false prophet, I will answer that. I will give you an answer by that false prophet. If you want to be deceived, God will deceive you, Romans chapter 1. But if you fear the Lord and love the Lord, this verse, you're going to have the good things. But your good things may not match God's good things. My thoughts are not as your thoughts, God says. 2 Kings 10, 19, Psalms 23, 1, and Jeremiah 35, 19 on that. God may have better good things than what you think are good things. James says that we ask not. Because we, I mean, we receive not because we ask not. And then we ask and we receive not because we ask for a miss that uh, consume in our lust. Some of our things are just lusty. And God won't answer that unless that's exactly what you want and destroy your life. You better thank God for some of us that God does not answer all our prayers. Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. So you got to be taught to fear the Lord. And you know what? I've been saved since 1987. I have never heard a lesson on the fear of the Lord. It has to be taught. You have to follow Christians who are doing right, and you're not getting that in the church today. You have to be taught. That's by testimony. That's by watching people. That's sitting down with somebody. Say, hey, listen, you do this for the Lord. Tell me how. Tell me what. It says over there in Titus that the women are teaching the younger women how to love their husbands, how to love their children, how to take care of the home. That's not happening in churches today. The American woman is a failure. What man is he that desireth life? All men. Why do you think the medical field is such an expensive field? Because every man will give all he can to, to stay alive. And doctors and nurses and hospital owners know that. The insurance companies know that. Listen, even born-again Christian, I desire to be, be with the Lord, but I also have that desire to be alive. I want to be in the will of God. If God wants me alive today, then I want to be alive to do what he wants. I've got somewhere, or I should maybe do it because I haven't seen it, but I did have a living will. I do. I don't know where it is. So I, I should get that going. I don't want to be hooked up to a machine. All that's doing is pouring money into the hospital. But people are hooked up to machines today for the sole purpose to keep me alive. Because they do know, the atheist does know that there's judgment. Even though they, they say, and loveth many days, that he may, say, he may see good. Now what person would not want to see good? I would love to wake up tomorrow morning and my teeth not hurting no more. And this cold or flu, whatever it is, gone. And never see another bad day. I'd love to, but let's get with reality. Remember where David's writing this? He's running from the king. He, he just got, he went to, to help and they didn't help him. David, want, David wants to get his troubles and problems over with. I want to see good days. And we know how long he had and the troubles he's had. Keep thy tongue from evil. Oh, not cuss. Yes, yeah, right. Oh, not cuss. But also from evil. Not just cussing. And thy lips from speaking guile. 
The Bible says that Jesus didn't speak to God. When they spoke to him, he didn't answer. Your lips, your talk ought to be pure. You say, well, Brother Stiley, some of, you, uh, some of your videos, you have, that's because God has called me to speak, and God's called my mouth to, to teach you. Some people do not have the gift that God's given me. You don't have the right to say to people what, I, what God has told me to say. You get that. My job is to rebuke, to, to exhort. I have a calling for God to use my mouth for holiness and to tell you about evil and tell you about wickedness. But I'm not to speak it. See, you think I speak evil because I've, I've kicked you. i kicked your idol. I've talked about your thing. I've explained things to you that are right out of the Bible. You think it's evil because you like it. And to God, it's sound. See, it all depends on how the ears hear it. Depart from evil and do good. No revenge. Seek peace and pursue it. That's funny from a guy who's now running from the king of Israel, who has been anointed himself to be in that spot. Now, the guy who's been anointed, anointed, anointed to be king, who's on the run, who's been kicked out of the throne where he is supposed to be sitting, tells you to depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it, that two times or three times he had an opportunity to kill King Saul, and he said, no, that's the Lord's anointed. I'll wait for God to do the job. And you got American Christians running around today plotting everything that they will plot against the man of this country who's the president. Including one guy I knew who wanted to put his face on the target so they can target practice. Does that sound like what David's speaking? David's speaking the words of the Lord. The Lord said, and John said, you're to love your enemies. John says you're to love your brother. Saul is David's brother. They are both Jews. Even though two different tribes, they come from the same father, Jacob. You get the complex where we are now? David's on a run, but he can still say verse 14 and sing it. Remember, Psalms is your hymnal. Whether he played the heart or the soul, whatever, he, he's out there singing these words. Alone and on the run. That's interesting. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And you better not forget that. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are beholding the evil and the good. But he's watching you if you're righteous and you're his. You're his son. He's your father. And his ears are open unto their cry. So Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. But I didn't get. How many times did you ask some, somebody something and you didn't get an answer right away? Ever, have you ever taken time to seek something that you were looking for? It's not the first. It's not usually the first place you look. Have you ever stood at the door knocking and knocking, waiting for them to come? Uh huh. I've stood at knocking on doors for the Lord, and you heard them in the house. You're just knocking, knocking, knocking. They're not going to come. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Now let me ask you a question. Would that be lost or saved? It said the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. If you do evil, are you righteous? No. I mean, you're saved. By the, it's only by the blood of Jesus Christ, by what Jesus done. But if you walk the evil way as a Christian, you think God's going to be for you? 
You think God's going to bless your rock and roll church meeting with the youth? And some of the nonsense we, we were watching today? You think because we're righteous, we're a Baptist church, and God is, what's it say? And, and God, and the eyes of God are upon us when we do evil. Have you read what Revelation 3 says that Jesus spoke, that God says, you make me sick? To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. You know, in heaven, we're not going to hear contemporary Christian music anymore. We're not going to hear Southern Gospel no more. Probably won't hear Osteen. <laughs> we won't hear these TV evangelism. And 99.9% .9 of the books, if you were going to a bookstore today, that are on the, the religious section, won't be ever heard in heaven. Or read or seen. You got more purity and ivory soap than you do the, the book section, the religious section, the bookstore. Think about all the things that are in the churches today. The Bible, listen, I'm preaching to Christians that you think is so great and won't be ever remembrance in heaven anymore. What was it? The, the banana squish or. Or, you know, the, the the girls feeding the boys by their toes. You think that's going to be remembered in heaven? That nonsense? I mean, you, you think we're going to be in, in heaven doing the YMCA, the, the village people, then the Rocky, and then, then the, the touchdown? That's not going to be remembered anymore. The righteous cry. And the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of their troubles. There will be deliverance, I guarantee. But sometimes the deliverance may have to be death or rapture. Sometimes. We're not guaranteed. I'm not going to blow no holy smoke or prosperity. It, you may have to suffer. All they that live, live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's why many Christians do not serve. They know what the cost is. They don't want to live the cost. You do wicked things to your body, you're going to suffer. It's plain and simple. Be not deceived, God's not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. How long did it take God? I don't know. I should look it up. How long did it take God to get David on that throne? It wasn't overnight. It wasn't take two prayers and, and you know call God in the morning. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a now, now see people love that put them, the Lord is nigh unto them, period. Judge not, least ye be judged. Well, quote the rest of the verse, please, the, the second verse. Stop throwing partial verses at me. You know? That nigh is present tense. That's not past tense, and that's not future tense. That is present tense. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Sometimes God's got to break your heart. Why did God allow that tragedy in my life to break your heart? And say it and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Contrite is broken, worn, humble. You look at your sin as it is wicked and vile, and oh Lord, what did I do? It's not like, oh, Lord, put it under the blood. Thank you very much. Okay, done. Go back. Not like that at all. You know, the only man that gets saved is the one that has a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Not just say this prayer and we're done. 
Fee Fi Fo Fum, and you know, I think this day and age, I don't know when it started, but this day and age, just say this prayer, people. There are tons of people out there who think they are saved, who have died thinking they were saved, and they're not. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. I think you are wicked. I think you're the devil. And you better not be saved and doing that to people. I would not want to stand up as a Christian and have people under me thinking they were saved and died and went to hell. Now, if if you teach it and you're unsaved, all right, you're going to get the greater damnation in hell. There are different degrees in hell. But I'm telling you, you've got to have the right heart to be saved. It ain't just a prayer. I will go far as to say that when a person gets saved, like I say, April 21st, 1987, that may not have been the day I got saved. Well, you ask the Lord. I may have got saved earlier than that. Maybe my heart called out the Lord before that. Maybe I just said a prayer and later on in my life I was saved. I don't know. I know I'm saved. I had to teach someone the other day about, you know, the exact times that many people don't. And when you get people today in this day and age, oh, I was saved at five or six. That may have happened for Bob Jones Sr. That may have happened for Lester Loa. That may have happened for great men back then. That don't happen today. Not with the preaching today. I'm sorry. I'm below the southern belt of the Bible belt of America, and I don't see Bible Christianity down here. I see foolishness and vomit. Many are the affliction, afflictions of the righteous. Oh, you see that? After we talked about God will deliver and everything, you know, God will answer prayer. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're going to get afflictions. You're going to have problems. Know it. Get it down. Write it down. When you're witnessing to somebody and they're going to trust Christ to save, don't you dare tell them they're going to have a wonderful life now. Matter of fact, you may have more afflictions because you've got Satan as your enemy. And if you choose to serve God and do right and put the armor on, guess what? You're in a battle. But the Lord delivereth him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, the Lord delivereth him out of all of them. How? When he takes you home. I can guarantee you this. You will be delivered from all your troubles one day. And May is not going to be here on this earth. Whatever your pain and trouble is will go away one day. Probably after you died or the rapture. Chances are, while you're alive, the only way I can give you a percentage on that, here's the percentage of your pains and sorrows going away on this earth by the mercy and grace of God. If not, he'll give you mercy and grace to go through it. He keepeth all his bones. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. Not one of them is broken. That's why they didn't stone him. Had they done the Jewish form of capital punishment, it would have been stoning. There was one point, if not two points, where the Jews were going to stone him right there. Because of Psalm 34, verse 20, they could not stone him. Now the question is with this verse. Have you ever seen an x-ray of a hand? Have you ever seen the bones of a hand? You need to look at an x-ray of a hand. Your hand is covered in bones. So how did they place those nails in his palm and not break a bone? Well, either one, 
It was so done by God that God moved the bones because he could be out of joint. There's a place in Scripture that says that his bones were out of joint, but they didn't break. That's a possibility. There's another possibility. In, in, in Genesis, when Abraham's servant goes to Rebekah, he puts bracelets on her what? Hands. Well, you don't wear bracelets on your So this part of your body may be going to the Bible, may be your hand. So when we draw the pictures of Jesus, with nail prints in his hands, you may be wrong. It may be right here. And if you look at an x-ray of your hand, guess what? you got two bones down here, a nice little spot to put a nail. Scripture with scripture. I'm sorry, Mr. Artist. I'm sorry, Mr. Drawer. But you are wrong. And God is right. Even if I've done it and need to put it under the blood of Jesus, some of my pictures I put out there. Could be either way. Some things God didn't tell us. Some things God did tell us. Evil shall slay the wicked. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You live in evil, it's going to slay you. Cancer, VD, whatever. You know the devil's going to be consumed one day in his wickedness into the lake of fire? And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Who was with the man in, in Luke 16, the rich man, in hell? No one. Are you telling me that the, the rich man in Luke 16 is the only man that was in hell? Oh, I'm going to go to hell and party with my buddies. Not if you're desolate. There's a quite possibility, and you're just going by this verse, and you go scripture to scripture, that when you go into hell, you ain't going to see nobody but yourself. Be all alone. For all eternity. And when you're in torments, no one's going to feel sorry for you. Or the other guy's going to expect you to feel sorry for him, but... Hate the righteous shall be desolate. Or maybe there's a special, I mean, listen, there are different degrees of hell. The Bible says the lowest hell. Maybe those that specifically hated you for doing right, maybe their punishment is desolation in, in the lake of fire. That's a quite possibility. When the city gives you a hard time for preaching on the street or passing out gospel tracts, maybe they that, that do it, maybe they'll get isolation. That's another thing that you have today. When you have this great disease, they isolate you or condemn you. And no one can come and see you but a special person. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. So don't you worry if you die. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. That's your soul. And along with that, God will give you your body back. A body almost like what Adam's body was. But to be likened to Jesus Christ. So you ain't going to be, you know, Casper the friendly ghost running around in heaven. You're going to have a body. His servant. You better be a servant of God. It is taken for granted that you're a servant. Imagine what you're going to be charged in heaven if you're if you don't do the servitude. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. We're all going to be together in heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. 
<coughs> no, excuse me. So those that hate the righteous are going to be desolate. The antecedent to that is those that do right and trust in God will, will not be desolate. I guess one of the most horrible things that can happen for you in eternity is you're left all by yourself. That's what the scriptures say. That's what David says. That's what the Holy Spirit allowed. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. That God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died.